Rupert, thank you. So uh, nice to have everybody on board. Uh, it's really exciting to have this next person in our mix. She was in real life a graduate of the FBI National Academy in Quantico, the first Latina to get to the rank of captain at the Fairfax County Police Department just outside of D.C. where I grew up. She retired as the commander of special investigations and forensics. She spent two decades on the force, and listen to this. Her assignments included hostage negotiation. I feel as though we could use some hostage negotiation around here once in a while. I think she could talk you down. I think she yeah, could do it. Yeah, I really yeah. think she may have a, that set of <laughs> skills that I need. Um, she was district station commander, and she uses her law enforcement background to bring a realism to the writing that she does, as you'll hear. She has, um, as I mentioned, this main character who's been optioned by Netflix in a Netflix series as the lead character. And we'll hear more about that. I mean, it's a feature film on Netflix starring Jennifer Lopez. Oh, that's yeah. cool. I know. There's a lot cool with this person who we're bringing on, the writer and the former hostage negotiator she <laughs> went from wearing a badge and a gun to now the pen and the keyboard how about it for isabella maldonado Yay! look at you isabella maldonado nice to see you it's great to be here do i need to be talking you off a ledge well i feel <laughs> like i'm i live on a ledge a lot of the time to be honest i uh can become downcast you know it's tough running your own YouTube thing, you know, plugging uh, the Patreon and the PayPal, the way things support you, you know. Mm -hmm. But I love that we can talk to a real writer, a real creator with a real background once in a while. It makes my life easier. So so thank yeah. you for um, thank you for your empathy, but it's not needed now. I feel much better in this moment. Okay. So uh, I mentioned your your real life world that informs your writing. Your new book is A Killer's Game. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about A Killer's Game. And this is part of a series of books that you've done, a series of stories. Actually, A, a Killer's Game is the first one in a new series um, okay. that this is kicking it off. The, uh, the one that is um, optioned by Netflix is the one that was before this. I so, see. but either way, I'm happy to talk about all of it, but uh, Killer's Game. <laughs> A Killer's Game just came out a couple of days ago, and you have the distinction of being the very first uh, YouTube podcast that I have had an opportunity to do. That is very strong. Well, we wear that <laughs> distinction proudly. So uh, the, the idea behind A Killer's Game is, uh, again, draws on your background in law enforcement and some of what you witnessed firsthand, yes? Mm -hmm. it, it does. Um, Part of it, it's it's like an amalgamation, and and part of what I was fascinated with when I was working on the Killers game is the explosion in popularity of escape rooms. I mean, they're all in every major city. There's you know you find them, they're they're cropping up everywhere. People are crazy about escape rooms, and of course, being the you know sort of a a, a cop, you know, so I have this dark twisted sense of humor, <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, it's fun to go to an escape room until it's real and you really can't get out and the consequences are deadly. So I, I thought, well, let's let's put that together and see how that turns out for people. <laughs> mm. So essentially, do people go into a what is like an escape room and then they're held hostage there? Yeah, basically. Um, th so the way I wrote this is um, it's an FBI agent and she goes undercover and she has to partner with um, with a killer because they're trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. There, there's a corrupt politician behind all of this. I know you find that shocking, but <laughs> um, you know, there's like all kinds of stuff going on. But um, so they're, they're trying to get to the bottom of it. So she has to join like a, a cadre of killers and they think that they're going to go there and do some virtual training. But it turns out that it's actually a trap. There is no virtual training. It is a real escape room. And they are literally trying to play for their lives. And she's in there with basically 12 assassins trying to survive. Wow, that sounds yeah. cool. Cadre is a ding word, by the way. Thank you. you like Congratulations. That? Okay, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> the um, uh, wow, and yet your lead character in a killer's game, um, she has to stay undercover this whole time while she yep. figures out how to get out. That is part of her. Okay, I've got another word for you: conundrum. Do you like that? Oh, very strong. Yes. Yeah, conundrum. Strong. That is part of her conundrum. Is that you know she has to try to not blow her cover, so she has to pretend like she's a killer and an assassin. But meanwhile, she's got to try to follow the rules. But ultimately, how can you possibly follow the rules when everything and everyone is trying to kill you? <laughs> you know, your um, is it. Nina Guerrera was your the special agent that is going to be played by Jennifer Lopez potentially in this Netflix uh, movie. Yes, yes, okay. and that one actually the first book in that series is the one that they're going to make um, the feature film out of, and it's and the feature film is going to be called The Cipher. It's named after the book, and that one when I found out that you were originally from Washington. Washington, I had to tell you that what inspired that book was the Beltway Sniper case. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, everybody, but it's it's funny, even when I talk to people anywhere, in, even in other countries, when I've done interviews, because um, the cipher is out in 23 languages, so it's taken off all over the world. But even other people in other countries know about the Beltway Sniper case. I mean, it made international news, but our department had one of them. And um, so that's right. I, was, I forgot you're in that you're in the department yes. in law enforcement when that was going on. Yes. And people were scared to go anywhere. There was yeah. no sense of, well, the Broadway, the uh, Beltway Sniper hits these venues more than others. It was uh, it was gas stations. It was yeah. uh, parking lots, outdoors, anything. You didn't know where it was going to happen. Uh, well, I can't imagine. That. Yeah, go ahead. Well, he, he made it a point, you know, after he was caught and they were interviewing, he said, I wanted to try to make it as random as possible. I wanted to terrorize everyone. So, you know, people who were getting killed, they were young, they were old, they were every race, different religions. They were going about their business. They were going to the store. They were cutting their grass, getting gas, going to school. He's, his, his message was, you are not safe, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no one's safe. It really was like an original form of terrorism before September 11th. That's such a great take on it. What did you guys do in law enforcement to try to affect the capture of that? And this is, uh, it's bringing me back to that time. Yeah. As you say, it, it was known yeah. around the world. And it was yeah. Washington, D.C., let's face it. I mean, it was the nation's yeah. capital, so it got even higher profile. Go ahead. Well, that's why, um, now, in at that point in my career, I hadn't made captain yet. I was a lieutenant, but I was in charge of our public information office. So I was the, the poor schmo who had to go out in front of all the reporters and try to make sense of all this. Um, that was my position. But because of that, I was in the you know, the Joint Information Center and the Joint Operations Center and all that um, because I had to be constantly briefed so that I would be able to speak to the public about it. And um, so also privy to what was going on investigatively. What was interesting, um, if you remember, uh, the the main guy, John Allen Muhammad, was, um, he's the one who's mostly responsible. The other one was really just a child, but he um, also talked to the media. He would put things out. He would do these weird riddles and clues and leave them at the scenes. He would make the chief of police in Montgomery County say bizarre things. And I thought, you know, if he wanted to engage the public and he wanted to, to get to the public directly. And I thought when I was um, doing the story, the cipher, I thought, well, if that was going to happen in today's day and age, how would that be accomplished? And I realized, well, social media, that's exactly how you would do it. So that is basically kind of what I was doing when I wrote the cipher. And so the cipher, who is the serial killer, is just one person, but he uses social media to engage the public and he terrorizes the entire country. And um, so that's just kind of how I did it. But the inspiration was the terror and the fear that the entire region was going through. It's weird that we have in these serial killers and these random killers, mm -hmm. we have a, this renaissance about those stories, you know? Uh, you see Dateline is at an all-time high in terms of popularity, and there are a bunch of podcasts. We even do a segment here on true crime. And it's uh, for you with a background in law enforcement and now as a writer crafting these narratives based... Um, at least informed in some broad way or some specific way, even as you just referenced, by your own experience, uh, it has to be a, a weird thing. You know, uh, I wonder if you can 
give me your take on where we are and why we have this kind of love affair with these stories. I, I think um, it's because we are fascinated by when, when people's minds go wrong. I mean, I've had to study a lot of brain science in order to be able to um, write about these things. But when, they're, when people go wrong, and what I think is also interesting is that they walk among us, they look just like us. I wish they had a glowing red sign above their head, but they don't. And so I think that's part of what um, is fascinating because it's like, how, how does this happen? How does someone, how does someone do these things? And it turns out that, you know, some of the brain science that um, is, is coming to the fore now is showing that, you know, people who do those sorts of things really are wired differently and they really don't have the empathy that a normal person would have, or I should say a neurotypical person would have. Is there a predictive hmm. tool that can be employed even just in terms of law enforcement strategies when it comes to uh, dealing with these potential uh, either serial killers or even these mass shooters? Mm -hmm. um, predictive is, is very difficult whenever it comes to human beings, but I mean, depending on the, the neurologist that you will listen to, some of them think that there are definitely factors in law enforcement, we can't really avail ourselves of any of that at this point. It's too, it's too preliminary for us, and it's almost better done after the fact. Um, but when we are trying to, when we're zeroing in, so one of the things I did when I was at the National Academy in, in Quantico, I was there for three months, sort of embedded, living on campus. But one of the things that I did was I studied under the BAU, the Behavioral Analysis Unit. So um, for those who like to watch the show Criminal Minds, that's, that's those people. Um, and it was really interesting to sort of learn exactly how they kind of um, do like a psychological post-mortem going and talking to all of these people about how they do what they do. And there are some things that they do have in common. And it really, in my opinion, it's a combination of nature and nurture. You may have certain tendencies, but they may not get activated depending on what it is that you go through in your life. Now, of course, that makes sense. The triggers are everywhere and you don't know necessarily what they are. Wow. What an interesting life you've had. That Quantico <laughs> world, the FBI world, um, the National Academy there, all these FBI agents who want to take on different roles, I suspect, in the agency. Some of them may not even be clear on what roles they want. Mm -hmm. Um when you watch it played out on television, it, there's a show called FBI, I think, on now. Mm -hmm. uh, is it laughable or is there now more fact-based stuff? They're getting better as far as that goes. Um, they have a lot of consultants. And um, I, have a, I have a really good friend of mine, a retired FBI agent, and she is a consultant that you know tries to make sure they get the things right. One of the things I had to learn to do, I used to just grind my teeth every time I would watch cop shows. And I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. But as I am writing and writing more, more books and more of them are coming out and everything, it's like um, I understand that you have to take search, certain shortcuts. If you wrote everything the way it accurately does happen, first of all, it would be very boring most of the book. But second of <laughs> all, there'd be so many characters in the book, people would lose track of it, you know, because you really don't, you do have this immense chain of command. And you know when you're on a large department, and Fairfax is a large department, so there's a lot of that. And and readers or viewers just lose track of everyone. So after a while, you're like, okay, I can understand why in this scene they have the chief of police talking to a detective, even though that would never happen, because you just don't want to show the 18 layers in between the two characters. So I get it. I uh, I also get the challenge for you, a writer, to bring that to life. It's to bring those layers and a lot of those people that, you know, you're sort of talking about, the administrative chain, you have to bring it to life maybe in the form of a handful of characters. So for you, the challenge is ongoing. Excited to read A Killer's Game. Look at you with all these reviews. The reviews are spectacular. Maldonado keeps the plot boiling and the body's dropping. All the way to the end. Wow. It is Intense, gripping, and compulsively readable. A killer's game goes from zero to 90 
on page one and never stops. There's a reason that this place is fun. Look at you. <laughs> FBI agent Danny Vega is a heroine to cheer for. Tough, inventive, and highly capable. A winner. Says I'm, Meg Gardner, a num she's the a, a number one New York Times yeah. best-selling author. You also are a best-selling author. You all, you best-selling authors stay together, I guess. But <laughs> she's she's amazing. She really is. And um, but yeah, I do tend to write things that are very high octane and fast paced, and um, it is. Yeah, it's not for the faint of heart. Some people have, have written that, um, you know, things like that. Yeah, it's it's not like a, yeah, it's not like a cozy where the cat solves the crime. It's totally not that at all. It's um, definitely much more hardcore. No but, wonder Netflix, uh, you know, is producing this as, a, a, not this, but one of your other works as a feature mm -hmm. film. And I'm sure this one is probably being targeted to be produced uh, as a feature as well. A it's killer's a game. It is. It is. Targeted. I know it. It's targeted. The secret is out. The secret is out. I love that high octane world. There's already, you know, if you have a a role for, um, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Isabella. There'd be no reason for you necessarily to know. Although uh, some of my work, uh, as you know, has been uh, in television and film. Do you know who I am? Yeah, I'm kind of a, kind big, of a deal. big deal. I uh, I could play. I have some range. That's all I'm saying. Albert, could you negotiate something for me, maybe with Isabella? I think. Uh, I'll put uh, my agent Albert in. Uh, Albert, thank you. Just put yeah, you in we're touch. looking at the the live golf Saudi money. The yeah, Saudi well, I, I'm around. not about money. I'm about the work, but I'm no. not going to work for free. The interview uh, was so going so great until you had to ask her for a job. That's where we just yeah, fell this, off. This is a the cliff. problem. This is the problem. Well. I don't know. Is maybe it, there would be an advantage to putting him into an escape room with a bunch of killers. <laughs> that would be well, good. Well, Mark, didn't you, know you. you did the ride along, Mark, and you, didn't you get like a rave review of? Like, I did get like a rave review. One percent of thinkers, type of thing. Thank you, thank you, Albert. Uh, Albert is talking Albert, about my, uh, and uh, I don't mean we'll wrap up here, Isabel. I don't mean to make this about me, but I am. Uh, a, you know, yeah, who I yes, am. exactly. Kind of a big deal. God I, it's about you. Went through the simulator, Isabella. You know the simulator that they take you through. And they said I was in the top 10%, is what they said, of uh, those who have worked the simulator. Three different scenarios, Isabella. So, what? Uh, Very yeah. Very good. I, 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 I try to impress my guests with a couple of uh, <laughs> uh, little morsels, and that's the one that I'm using to impress you today. So, um, Isabella... Proud. Isabella, <laughs> Isabella Maldonado, uh, A Killer's Game is the book. I'm picking it up. You should pick it up. Yeah. And apparently it's quite the ride. She's the Wall Street Journal bestselling author. She wore the gun in the badge and now she brings it to life. I love awesome. It. And actually someone wrote in the comment, they had a question to, um, asking, is it on audiobooks? Yes. All of my books are available on Audible. So, no. yes. Yep. Terrific. So pick this one up, A Killer's Game. Isabella Maldonado, when the movie comes out, mm -hmm. the first movie, I know there'll be several, you'll have to come back and visit. You're, yeah. uh, you're a great guest. We appreciate you coming through. Thank you. It's a lot of fun. You're, you're absolutely fantastic. And I love all the questions. Everybody's so engaged. It's great. Uh, really, really cool. See you again. Bye-bye, Isabella Maldonado. Yeah, really, really, really cool. I love it. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.